How's it going everyone, Jimmy here. So today I wanna to talk about the Jump Tech Option Select and I wanna teach you how to use it. Now, if you're new to the Street Fighter series, you might not know what an Option Select is. Um, an Option Select is basically a series of inputs that is supposed to cover multiple situations. You're basically trying to let the game engine decide what to do in certain spots uh, within a game. So. That sounds pretty powerful, and it is actually very, very good, but in Street Fighter V, it's kind of hard to pull off option selects for multiple reasons. In Street Fighter IV, uh, there were a ton, like, so many option selects, you wouldn't believe it. At, at one point, I actually wanted to do a video about it, but um, unfortunately, I never got to release it. But, like, I, like, when I started to do that video, like, there were so many option selects to cover. Uh, it would have been like a, a one-hour video just explaining every single option select that I could think of. So, yeah, people were discussing on whether or not option selects needed to get nerfed because essentially it was like... If, you're, if you were playing against a player that knew how to do option selects, you would flat out lose any game just because of that, that knowledge. And... Um, yeah, as I said, in Street Fighter V, option selects are not that strong, but the ones that do exist uh, are pretty powerful. But for some reason, they're not that popular. Not a lot of players are actually utilizing option selects in Street Fighter V for some reason. I don't know, maybe the game is too new and people aren't that aware of uh, what they can do with the game yet. So yeah, let's jump into the game so I can teach you guys how to utilize the Jump Tech option select. So when do you use this option select? You use this option select on your wake up game after after you get knocked down. So what do you want to do and how do you perform this option select? So let's take a look at the inputs first. What you want to do is you want to hold down back first uh, in order to prevent your opponent from getting a media attack on your wake up. Uh, pretty straightforward, um, but right afterwards what you want to do is you want to jump back and tech right when you jump when you're jumping back. So your inputs should look something like that. Okay? So as you can see, pretty straightforward input. Uh, you're just holding down back uh, on your wake up and right after that situation, you're going for a jump back plus grab. So why is this so effective? Um, I actually recorded Kami to do certain options here that are very popular on wake up. So, so you can get, get a feeling for why this option select is, is as good as it is. So the first option that you're going to see is she's going to knock me down and then she's going to go for a midi attack. Pretty straightforward, nothing too special, but very popular to do. So the second option is going to be a grab. Also an option that usually you do want to cover, right? And usually you cover this by just grabbing on wake up. But you'll see the option select is going to cover cover that pretty nicely. And the third option is a so-called shimmy. Now, if you're not that familiar with what a shimmy is, a shimmy is basically just a way, like you're getting inside of the range of a grab, and you, you want to trigger the opponent into grabbing, and right before they do grab, what you do is you go back, um, the grab will fail, and right when they're basically failing this grab, uh, you punish it with something. So that's the idea behind the shimmy. And the cool thing about the option select is it covers all three options. So there is one really, really nice feature that I like about Street Fighter V, and that's this option. If I, if I turn on all three recording sessions, it's going to randomly choose one of those. So right now, if I go back, I don't know what Kami is going to do. And that's a really good way to see if you're actually mastered the option select. No matter what option is going to get chosen here, um, you're supposed to get away with that, okay? So let's take a look at how, how this usually looks like. So she's knocking me down, I block the, the, the media attack. That's fine. Now, the shimmy attempt failed because I jumped away. So she went for a shimmy attempt again. And see, like, now, the, the third option, the grab, sometimes you will jump away from it, uh, and sometimes you will tech it. It really depends on how exactly uh, you perform this option select. See, now I tech the throw. Both op options are fine. 
The important part is no matter what options Kami ch uh, chooses to do, you're gonna get away with that. So bam! So there's one more thing that I want to talk about, and um, that's like as you can see right now, what I'm doing is I'm just I'm just jumping back and pressing grab, okay? But you need to be a little more like you're. This is not the optimal input for the Jump Tech OS. What you want to do is you want to go into a down back position right after you perform the options, okay? So your inputs should look like this, okay? You're doing, you're doing the option select and right afterwards you're going into a down back motion. So the reason why you want to do this is if the opponent chooses to do a midi attack and goes into a low attack right away or goes into any attack right away and you're just performing the jump back option select then you might get hit. You need to be ready for what's going to happen next basically. Okay? So I recommend do the option select and hold down back as quickly as possible again. Okay, so there's one more thing that you might be asking yourself, hey Jimmy, what do you do in the corner? Okay, and that's a very, very good question. Because in the corner, if you perform the option select, as you can see, you'll just jump back in the corner again. And if the opponent stands right next to you, um, you're gonna get punished for that. You're gonna come down and the opponent will be able to punish you. So how do you prevent that? You can't really prevent that. Like the jump back option, like the jump back option select is actually, um, like that. That's a huge risk you're taking basically in the corner. So in the corner, this option select is not that, um, not that strong. But there's one variation that I do want to mention here, and uh, that's the jump forward OS. Okay. So basically, you're doing the exact same input, but instead of jumping back, you're jumping forward. So you're holding down back in the corner. And instead of doing this, you do this, okay? You just jump forward after you block a meaty situation. So it's not an optimal uh, solution, but it does cover um, a lot of, like in a lot of situations, you're going to get away with this. And that's, that's the important part. Every once in a while, you can do that in the corner, but you'll see, um, you'll see that you're, you're actually taking a risk. If the opponent doesn't do anything on your wake up here, uh, again, they can't punish you because you're just jumping forward and you're still in range for the opponent to um, to trip guard you. So, yeah, that's about it uh, for how this option select works. Uh, what you should be uh, should be aware of. So, so yeah. As you can see, this option select is an exceptional defensive tool that is uh, definitely going to help you out a lot and it's going to make sure you're uh, going to get away most of the time on the wake up situation. But obviously if you're able to use this option select, well your opponent is also able to use this option select. So how do you blow up this option select in case your opponent tries to abuse this? Um, the most common way to blow this up is by doing a delayed normal on your opponent's wake up. If you do that, then you'll you'll like what you're trying to do is you're trying to catch your opponent in the pre-jump frames. So if they wake up, obviously they're gonna block the media situation. So you can't be hitting buttons there. But right afterwards, right after that situation, if you, you delay your normal uh, enough and then you hit it, you're you're gonna uh, catch your opponent in the pre-jump frames, and you'll be able to get a full combo. Because if you hit your opponent in the pre-jump frames, they're actually gonna get hit uh, grounded, so they're not just gonna recover and um, get an air reset after the normal. You'll you'll be able to get a full combo from that. So that's pretty bad, right? But um, there's one thing that makes this a little tricky. And that's what I, what I wanted to say as well. You 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 actually like you can't just always get away with the jump back option select against strong players. They are gonna do a delayed normal, but the delayed normal is weak to waking up with buttons, and that's what I love to do. So a lot of the time I will wake up with the jump back option select, but every once in a while I wake up with the standing jab in order to prevent the opponent from. Uh, doing the delayed normal to blow up my option select. So that's very, very tricky to deal with. If you wake up with uh, the, the jump OS most of the time, and every once in a while you wake up with the jab and you hit confirm into a combo if the opponent gets hit, then 
you'll see um the opponent is gonna have a hard time uh doing anything against that because both options are like designed to cover whatever your opponent wants to do your opponent basically needs to do something very weird to to blow you up for that um what i also want to mention is some characters or some some opponents actually have developed uh, some pretty neat tech in order to prevent uh, this this option select. I've encountered Kami players that will do um, critical art on reaction to the jump back, which is pretty nice. Like um, when I got hit by that the first time, I uh, like I, I just realized okay, some players are actually actively developing uh, uh, some sort of tech against that. Ken players sometimes dash forward and do a Shoryuken. And I think the dash forward can actually get, like, you can cover the dash forward um, with an option select. Um, maybe I'll do a, do a video about that at some point as well. Uh, some some guy, I don't really remember who, who it was, did, did um, like, made a video on how to blow up the teleport of Dalsim with uh, an option selected dash forward. That's very, very interesting tech. And at some point, I'm probably going to explain how to do that and um yeah what kind of benefit you have but like honestly in street fighter 5 uh, if if you don't really use option select it's not that big a deal most of the time um this defensive option select is 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 something you should be utilizing on high level though i really recommend um like if if you if you're ever going to learn any option select this is the option select that you want to uh, want to be learning okay because um even though other option selects are kind of neat, I'm going to be talking about uh, some other option selects that I figured out, and um, yeah. But honestly, they're not that strong. In general, option selects um, are not that strong in 5, because you need, to, um, you, you need to do something really weird, or you're, you're basically giving up on offense a little bit when you do utilize option selects and that's the downside um most of the time when you're going for like especially offensive option selects have this kind of property that you're you're basically giving away your offense in order to counter one specific defensive option of your opponent so a lot of the time, that's not really that good. But I'm going to cover these offensive option selects at some point in another video. So, yeah, guys, let me know what you think about uh, the JumpTac OS in the comment section below or live on Twitch. So take care, and I'll see you soon.